Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. This is a power review of Absinthe 5. This is part one. We're going to be doing an overview of the power of Absinthe 5. And I'm really happy to have a special guest that's going to come along with us on this review through Absinthe 5. Before we get to that, let me point out just a couple of things real quickly. Number one, uh, this video is sponsored by my website, PluginGuru.com. And at that website, you will find amazing patches for Massive, uh, for Native Instruments FM8, and for Stylus RMX. And I also have drum loops in the recycle format for um, that work within Stylus RMX or other recycle players. Called it, the library is called Beatropolis. So please check those out. Uh, please buy those. Those support me making more of these videos. And um, this is a really fun one because I got to bring someone else and actually have someone else to talk to besides myself the whole time. You know, a little crazy talking to myself the whole time, you know? Um, the music you're hearing in the background, this is the first demo for the Power Pack for Absinthe 5. Um, it, it's, Absinthe 5 is known as a soundscape thing, and that's kind of how it's marketed, but it has incredible power to do really, really killer, straight ahead, the heart of a song kind of patches. And so I made a whole bunch of really cool patches uh, for the Power Pack, and it comes out on April 15th. So if you don't have it, you should get it because it's a completely different side of Absinthe than what you find presented in any of the factory voicing for the most part. So check it out. Anyway, uh, let's get to the, uh, to the uh, review. Here we go. All right. Well, welcome back, and I'm really happy to be able to go through this introduction of Absinthe and bring along someone who, good grief, it's Brian Clevenger. Hi, Brian. Hi, Hi John. Great How to are be you? here. Yeah. Good great to, to see be you, man. Great to guru. Great, great you're here. Hey, um, so this is your baby. Yes, it is. I created Absinthe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, now um, before, we, before we start making noises and stuff with it... Um, Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your What's your background? Where you You live in Paris or outside of Paris, right? Yeah, I live near Paris, but uh, I'm American. Right. I've lived in France for a long time. Oh, cool. Where Where did this start from? Where Where did the idea for absinthe, um, and when? How long ago? Yeah, well, it was a long, long time ago. Um, you know, in the late '90s, uh, computers were starting to get fast enough to do sound. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw the program Super Collider, which I think you know. Yeah. And uh, I realized, you know, this opens up a lot of possibilities that, that we can do sound on the computer. Yeah. And I think I'd always fantasized about making a synthesizer, but um, I'm not an engineer or anything like that. So um, I taught myself programming. Wow. And uh, little by little, started building this uh, synth that eventually became Absinthe. What was and, what was your goal with Absinthe? Um, because you know, there's there's virtual instruments that are trying to look like a Prophet Five or a Mini Moog, or right? Something. Well, I mean, at the time, um, there wasn't even that stuff yet, right? You know, it, it was mostly this more academic. Uh, experimental kind of stuff like Super Collider, where you know it's more like a programming language, right? And it's difficult to use. And what I found frustrating uh, with things like Max, MSP, and Super Collider was um, a patch would get to a certain level of complexity, and it would get to this level of complexity where I couldn't really add anything more to it. You know, it's it's it it. it and I could never really go far enough. Yeah. So I wanted to make the programming part real easy. Everything's ready to go. Right. Um, you don't have to worry about why it's not making sound or something, you know, like right. in a full modular system. Right. The basic hook a keyboard up, get it to the speaker yeah. output connector. Yeah. And so um, it's, it's really easy to add new elements to the sound. That that was kind of my goal, I think. Yeah. Some something a little bit in between. You know, this fully modular, um, 
more experimental kinds of systems and the the real simple mini mode emulator right. type right. thing right um something in between the two yeah well and instead you made something completely new in its own little universe i think you know i mean yeah 10 years I, ago I didn't plan it that way i just um yeah. you know it's it's just a lot of little decisions that eventually led to right. uh yeah. led to the way it is now i mean like so. 10 years ago i remember coming across absinthe and it was so different than it was like a completely different language even though it used filters and oscillators and in, in synthesis terms but the sounds that it created and the personality of the sounds was so unique and what's really great um you know it's 10 years later and it's just keeps it's been growing and adding new tools to work with but that same feeling is there when you make the sounds and when you hear the sounds it's mm -hmm. there's a really great emotional connection i think to the synthesizer you know from the sounds it makes so congratulations it's great to now have you ever done any videos like this before no this is my i think this is the first time i'm on youtube <laughs> well first time my face is on youtube so well here you go <laughs> well now do you do you do you have um you know, when you're not working on absinthe, is there other work? Do you work elsewhere doing something? Oh, I'm all I'm always working on absinthe. At some level, yeah. Either fixing bugs, working on stuff for the future. Right. Um, that's or, not the only project I'm working on, but right. um, well, we won't talk about that. I don't think. Can't, but can't talk about that. No, but <laughs> that's good to know. It's good to know there's stuff in the future. You know. Oh yeah. Great. Well, let's take a look at absinthe. Okay. So here we're in the patch view. Yeah. And you can see at the top, you've got three oscillators, which you've just turned on. Right. You just click um, right here to turn them on and off. Yeah. They're oscillators. They're, they could be samples. They can right. also be audio input. So these are the sound sources. You click and right here, and here's your forms. These are DSP-based synthesis, right? Yes. Um, and then you get to sample. And then granular works with samples, right? Now, yeah. what are these yeah. blocks below here? So, so this is a column that equals one oscillator, right? Right, and we call that a channel. Okay, we've so got these three independent channels. Mm-hmm. Um, and then down below, you've got these three modules, which are the master channel, which right. is a mix of the the three right. uh, independent channels. So the these three the oscillators. Beam. The line follows down here, and it goes to a wave shaper, mm -hmm. to a filter, and to the effect unit. And in, in, when Absinthe first came out, and actually until Absinthe 4, I believe, that's how it was. And That's right. But now we we have more flexibility. Right. Okay, talk if, about that a little bit. I'll, I'll click buttons while you explain right. that so concept. There's three basic types of modules here. You, can, you have the filter, right. you have mod, right. which is a ring modulator. Right. Frequency shifter. And then you go the wave shaper. Right. And you can select any any module type anywhere you want. So for example, you could have uh two filters in series, or you could have wave shaper and then a filter. Right. Or whatever. Right. There there's quite a lot of flexibility now. And so let's call it the sawtooth waveform and kind of right. Oh, and I've got these blocks on. When you turn these blocks on, whatever they're set to is immediately what you hear. The wave shaper is a really cool signal amplification kind of a an effect unit. And as you can see, the same waveform list is here. And as you put the sound... Yeah, wave shaping is a type of nonlinear distortion. Right. Uh, wave shaping is one aspect of um, like amplifier mod modeling or something like that. Right. And a cool tip for anyone working with this, the input, the signal going into the wave shaper controls the type of distortion. And so as you... Yeah. You the, can bring the down more... the input um, to get it to be tamer or bring it up to make it more obscene. <laughs> and then right. output doesn't change the tonal character but it controls just the level of it so 
I want to just show the flow real quick. So here's your, your waveform, and then you have where you can choose, say, a filter. Let's do like we're doing an analog synthesizer. Um, when you go to the envelope page, this is where you see the envelopes for each of the oscillators. And by default, it only has the amp, the volume. And if you click right up here above where it's got the little zoom marker and you drag in a downward right slant, you can actually zoom and keep it at the beginning. If you just go up and down, it's going to get to where you can't see the beginning. But if you, if you, it takes a lot of, <laughs> even after 10 years. Um, and you'll notice that the attack is a little bit on the soft side. It's to keep it so that the, like, it doesn't have a really snappy attack. But if you're doing synth bases and leads, Bring that all the way up so that you got nice snappy attacks. And if you double click in this area, it will zoom it out to where it zooms it so you can see it. And here's your release. Oh, what have I got turned on? Oh, I got the effects turned on. And the low pass filter, you can turn up the. Now, if I want to have a, a envelope on the filter, all you do is you go to say new. When you click here, whatever modules, see there's only three right now, right? But if I had a patch where I had all these guys turned on, just as a hypothetical, right? If I go to the envelope and I say new now, boom, it's added each of those modules. And this is where the power of absinthe is really mind blowing because each one of the modules has a list of what you can assign an envelope to. And it gets huge. If you go to some of the things like cloud and some of the other new um, module choices, the, the choices are huge. And then you have to look at the names here because we have filter for B, that would be the second oscillator, filter for C, and filter for A. And I want to say filter for A. And so now on top of the amps, I've got a filter for A. And as I play it, let me turn these guys off because I only want to hear this. There's no filter EG intensity knob that you need to turn on somewhere. It works differently in that you just add in a filter and then and then the green part is the release. And if you click on the little in between segment little dot, that allows you to control the curvature. And Brian made the first envelopes with a changeable segment like this 10 years ago with the first version of Absinthe. It didn't exist before this in a software, especially a real-time envelope, right? Not that I know of. Yeah. I know um, Crystal came out not a, a while later and had selectable shapes and also some other cool options as well. Right. Um, but this is the first one where... You can get these incredible shapey little most synthesizers especially computer cpu ones have a linear shape which is okay for but some of the moogs and some of the other envelopes are actually more of this type of shape so to be able to change that is awesome